Hello everyone, so this video will be all about the kite shield. The kite shield was one of the most used uh, shields in Europe in the 11th and 12th century and it was uh, used by practically everyone. They were used in shield formations as well as on horseback. As you can see in uh, the bio tapestry, the uh, Battle of Hastings, they were used on both sides as well as the Anglo-Saxons as the uh, Normans used them. I use it myself for my Norman uh, Crusader outfit and uh, well they were very popular in, because it has the teardrop shape which gives my body complete coverage. As you can see if I just put one leg forward it protects the leg very well and because it is this shape you can work around it very easily and it isn't as heavy as uh, let's say um, an ancient uh, oval shield or something like that. This I made with the strap configuration as was very uh, common and popular. Uh, this was also shown at the bio tapestry uh, when uh, the Norman riders used this configuration. You also have sources that are saying they uh, had a cross right here, here a strap and here a strap. But I uh, tried that one uh, before, but uh, I don't like it very much because this is more efficient. I'm, I've used four rivets and uh, one, two, three, uh, four different bands when, with two of them going also around the shoulder. So this is a very uh, efficient setup. And the uh, one with the cross, I believe, is only used like this, whilst this is obviously multi-use. Multi so I really like uh, the shield, how it is, how it feels. You can swivel it about very uh, easily. You do notice the big uh, shield boss at the front. Um, as far as I'm considered, it doesn't have much use. As you can see, the rivets here hold the shield boss and here are also two. If I put my hand like this, okay, the shield boss does offer a bit more armor protection for my elbow, but that's it. So I don't uh, really, I cannot really explain why they were uh, put on. You do see them also without the shield boss, but uh, the Normans practically uh, almost always use them with a shield boss. Uh, they also, you can also see a 12th century uh, version of the kite shield that has a flat top uh, above. And the uh, picture I was uh, shown, or I saw, had uh, the straps going like this, so diagonally. Which does give more support, which does uh, make it easier to wield. This you do need to clench your fist very much will you want to use it like this. Uh, the pillow here is so you don't uh, touch the rivets here from the shield boss with your forearm and also because it is bent a bit uh, it does uh, it makes sure the middle is, com is coming a bit uh, towards your forearm so your forearm has constant contact with the shield and not only at this and this point here. So whenever a hit comes, it also cushions the blow and all the forces distributed uh, equally across the arm. So using it in a shield formation, well you can easily see, it can easily overlap with one over here. Using the spear like this very easily, you can work around it every way. You can use it in a one-on-one -on -one fight like this. Very easily you can see I do have, uh, I can uh, put my spear practically everywhere without the shield hindering me. If a blow comes to my head, easily, I can easily defend my head. So yeah. Uh, how I made this one, I uh, used two pieces of uh, multiplex plywood 
poplar plywood and I put them together with glue and at the same time I ratcheted them into shape. So when the glue dried, uh, the shape stayed that way and uh, that way you get the best result. I tried multiple uh, well, experiments and well, this is the only one that actually worked. I also tried uh, uh, soaking them with water, but you need boiling water for it. And to put boiling water all over such a big shield and keep it hot for quite a while, that's just a nuisance. So yeah, that's the method I used. These rivets are for um, for uh, gardening poles, hoes, that uh, sort of thing. So I needed to grind them down a bit because they were very long. So like they were like this, but just use uh, an angle cutter and the job is done easily. Uh, here we have these wash washers. Well, you can get them almost everywhere. Well, leather doesn't need explaining. And uh, the edge is all uh, rawhide from dog bone. Very, yeah, it's not that cheap actually, but it's very, um, very easy to come by. So painted it over with acrylic uh, paint, and that's uh, pretty much how I made this one. And uh, I faced it with linen. Do note that I made some shields with canvas, but linen is way and way better. This one also has already seen some action and you don't see that much damage over here. When you have canvas, whenever a hit comes, there's a bigger chance of the canvas ripping. And with linen, the chance is uh, pretty much minimized. One thing you can also do with the kite shield is you can uh, hang it over your shoulder for when you're on the march or something or you want to uh, just don't have, want to have a shield in the way. How I accomplished that is because this is uh, actually pretty long. I cannot just put it right here and just hang it over my shoulder. So it will still be too long. What I do is I uh, tie a knot. So put it on my back. Just tie two knots, one like this, this and the other one like so. Now it rests easily on my back and I can use spear two-handed, very nice. And uh, whenever someone is coming for my back, well, you'll have a tough time because there's a shield in the way. So yeah, this is my video about the kite shield. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye and have a good day.